So, you want to start a scrunchy business in 2023? In today's video, I'll give you some pros and cons of doing so. I will see you in a moment. Hey girl, hey, or hey boy, hey. Welcome back to OMG & Co, also known as OMG Scrunchy Club. And for those of you that are new, welcome to the club. My name is Lamiel. I am the owner and creator here at OMG & Co. And if you click on today's video, it is because you want to possibly start a scrunchy business. And today I'm going to give you some pros, cons, tips, and advice on doing so. So grab something to drink, your notepad, and sit back, relax, and listen to me chat for a moment. I promise to try to keep this video short and to the point. And at any time, if you have any questions or suggestions, do please leave a comment in the comment section down below. So I'm going to elastic some scrunchies while we go on this pros and cons journey. Okay, so let's get started. So I have a few notes um, on pros and cons of starting a scrunchy business. But before I get into that, um, a question that I get asked quite often is, is it a good idea to start a scrunchy business now? My answer to that is yes and no, I guess, I don't know. It just depends on where you're located and the market uh right now the scrunchie market is highly 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 saturated everyone's making scrunchies but if you look at let's take going to the grocery store or the market depending on where you live and what you call it if you go down the bread aisle there are tons of different types of bread companies which could one could consider a highly saturated market but you just have to find the specific bread that is to your liking. For example, you have gluten-free bread, you have wheat bread, non-bleached bread, you have edgeless, crustless bread. I mean, there's a variety of types of bread as well as a variety of scrunchy makers. So uh, go into it with the mindset of, yes, there's competition, but what way can I differentiate myself from others? For example, <clears throat> one thing that I like to personally do to differentiate myself from others is create my own custom fabrics. Um, that way I'm sure that no one has the design that I'm using. I also kind of like to stray away from mom and pop store, I mean from big box stores, sorry, such as Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, Joann's, uh, etc., Walmart. Um, but I do use them, but I try to steer away from them for the simple fact that everyone has access to those type stores. So what I tend to do is if I'm not making my own custom fabric, I will, um, go to a local fabric store and I'm excited that there's a new fabric store opening down the street from me. Actually, um, I could actually walk to it, but I'm not going to because if I have tons of fabric to buy, that would be a lot to haul. Um, so that is one way i try to differentiate myself also in your pricing you want to be competitive with your pricing um i will say this you don't want to go too low in your pricing even though it does not cost a lot of money to make scrunchies um, scrunchies have a high profit margin to be honest with you it doesn't cost a lot but if you sometimes when you tend to lower your price of things people tend to think that the quality is not as good when in actuality you could have outstanding quality and you can make your scrunchies really low and still have a high profit margin so you may have to test the market in your area to see which price point works best for your type customer so that is something you may want to consider um <clears throat> as far as should you do scrunchies or start a scrunchie business that would be solely up to you um if there are some rewards to it if successful um and with any business you have to start in order to know if it's for you or or not for you so you won't know and along the way trust me you will fail and you will find what works for you not fail necessarily as a whole business but in some aspects you may fail at your price point your marketing um but as you go you will learn from your mistakes and can better yourself from those so <clears throat> let's start with the pros of starting a scrunchy business one pro for me 
is working for myself. My husband and I were um, big advocates of, hey, the best company to work for is your own company. So if you start a scrunchy business, you have the opportunity to work for yourself. And possibly you may be able to add, um, get some family members on board with you. That way you can hire some family. Um, you don't have to worry about getting fired. You can take a break or vacation anytime you want to because it is your own business. So that is a pro of owning a scrunchy business or starting a scrunchy business. And I will say starting a scrunchy business, the startup, the next pro is it is an easy startup. You can buy a yard of fabric um, at a reasonable price, depending on what type of fabric you use, and make quite a few scrunchies off that one yard, depending on the size of your scrunchies that you are making. So it is easy to start and it is inexpensive. So when I first started, I got samples. I made samples first and I took pictures of those samples and um, started a YouTube channel. And as I got interest into what I was making, I added more inventory for those particular sample scrunchies that I was making. And often people ask, what's the size of my scrunchies? I don't give out that information simply because I literally made hundreds of scrunchies to determine what size I needed to make. Depending on the thickness of my fabric, I adjust my size. Um, sometimes I will adjust the length. The width is pretty much the same, how wide the scrunchies are, but depending on the thickness of the fabric I will adjust how long that I make the um, scrunchies and I try many 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 different sizes throughout my scrunchie making process just to find out which sizes work for me so right now I have four different sizes I have the XXL I have the mini I have petite and then I have a micro scrunchie I haven't shown it yet but I made that one a few months ago so um, like I said, it's inexpensive to start and a high profit margin. So another pro when it comes to scrunchy making is um, a scrunchy business is scheduling. So if you want to do seasonal lunches, um, you know, every year Christmas comes in December, Halloween, October, Valentine's Day, February, etc. So you can kind of pre-schedule lunches based around the holidays or even seasons. Um, last year, and when I started my business, my scrunchie business, I would do lunches every season. So that were four seasons in a year. So I would do a lunch each quarter. But this year, I decided not to. I did do a lunch, I want to say at the end of last year or the beginning of this year. But this year, I decided not to do a seasonal scrunchie lunch. And here is one reason why, which leads me into my cons. So... One reason I didn't do a seasonal scrunchie lunch is because I am a solopreneur. I am doing everything by myself and I feel as though when I have a seasonal lunch, I am forced to get these scrunchies done in a time frame that sometimes is hard because I am a wife and a mother to four kids and now we're in the summer season. I am also the Uber driver to drive everyone to all of their summer activities. So to alleviate some of the pressure and stress out of my life, I decided this year not to do a seasonal lunch, which I did. I designed my items for this summer. I had towel designs, t-shirt designs, and some scrunchy designs that I was going to lunch. Um, but I think I'll just save those until next year. So I even designed the custom fabric for my scrunchies, but I was like, hey, I wasn't in the mood. So that's that. Um, which leads to another con. If you are a solopreneur, it can be a lot of work for one person to do because you're the scrunchie maker. You have to go and buy the fabric. You have to take the pictures, upload them to the website, edit the pictures, do all of the social, me social media content, which is a lot of work for one person to do. So... It started to become overwhelming for me um, because my scrunchies, they're not my number one priority spending time with my family is. So if you haven't noticed, I've been off of social media for a while and that is the reason why because time waits for no one and I don't want to miss out 
on spending time with my family because my focus was primarily on making a successful scrunchie business. So if it's meant for you, it will happen. Um, you could still be successful and have time for your family. Um, but as your business grows, you can hire people to help out. I was hoping my daughters would want to help out, but they're not into making scrunchies as much as they are into wearing the scrunchies. So it kind of left me to do everything alone, which I have no problem with. But I know that my family is top priority, so that's why my videos are few and far in between. Um, let's see. A con, I kind of mentioned this, is that the scrunchie market is um, overly saturated. But to kind of fix that issue, I suggest selling printed scrunchies or scrunchies with designs or have a theme scrunchy theme if you possibly can but i noticed with my own business solids they sell but they don't sell as best as um scrunchies with designs uh i think the thing is with solids for example this blue but this goes with something something you'll see in an upcoming video um these scrunchies that i'm making now so for example this blue anyone has access to blue satin fabric <clears throat> therefore that this is likely not to sell in comparison to something maybe let's go with this floral um fabric here that i got from one of my uh, fabric stores that will likely sell in comparison to a solid colored scrunchie so that's what i mean when i say get something with print or designs um they sell a lot more or a lot better than the solid scrunchies another thing is which i kind of briefly mentioned is social media when you have a business you should have a social media account so when i first started out i ran into the problem of not being able to manage all of my social media platforms still struggling with that now but i have a solution which is metricool no this video is not sponsored by metricool at all but hey if someone from metricool is watching and would like to sponsor a video I'm available. Um, so Metricool is a social media scheduling platform that I am using now. And it allows me to upload my content and have it scheduled to release on certain days. I haven't used it probably in about two months because I was on a, I don't want to do anything, funk train. F-U-N-K, funk train. I, sometimes I get in the mood of, oh my goodness, life. I can't take it anymore. So. When I get to that point, I just stop doing everything. And the aspect of I stopped sewing scrunchies, I stopped posting to social media outside of the content that I had scheduled going onto my Instagram page for our mental awareness month last month. And I was still selling, but I was not making anything. Whatever I had already inventory and made that's what i was selling so it was easy to just come and grab something off the shelf and ship it out to the customer but now um back to social media if you schedule your social media that can alleviate a lot of stress and time but you will still have to take time out to create the content to go on your social media platform which is a con another con creating content that is a problem for me the reason being, um, since I am a solopreneur, once again, it is my responsibility to set this lovely camera up that you're watching me on. Watching me on, I have to shoot the content, I have to edit the content, I have to schedule the content. It is a lot easier for me to just grab my sewing machine, my serger, embroidery machine, or whatever machine I want to use for the day. It is easier for me to just pick that machine up and start sewing, versus having to pick that machine up, set this camera up, give you different angles for all the content. So even though you may not see me working on camera, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not working unless I'm in one of those funks again, where I'm totally like, uh, forget this. I'm just going to watch Netflix and chill all day. But um, it's a lot of time and it is very time consuming. Hopefully I'll be able to grow to the point to where um, I can hire someone to edit my videos even though I have four kids maybe one of them would want to come and edit the videos for me I'm trying to pay them and bribe them but 
doesn't seem to work. It works momentarily, and then they're like, nope, we want to do something else, which is understandable. Kids are kids. So um, that is a con, uh, keeping, up, keeping up with all of those different social media sites. Um, time. A con to starting a scrunchy business as a solopreneur. Well, I this can be based off a situational based situation. So for me, I have four kids. Maybe for you, you have no kids. So if you have no kids, maybe time is of the essence. Maybe you live with your parents or something and you don't have the responsibility of being responsible for other people. So maybe time is a pro for you because of not having all those responsibilities. You could be on the other end of the fence where I don't have responsibilities of other people. So this is a pro. This is the perfect time for me to start a scratchy business. As for me, if the kids aren't bothering me, but when does that ever not happen? Um, but if I had time, lots of time, or when I have time and my kids aren't bothering me, it is a pro if I don't have to take them anywhere. Not necessarily using the word bother me, but if I don't have to do anything with them or for them, I have time. But most of the time, I have to find time, which leads me to not being able to sleep at night because... The best time to work in my house is when everyone is asleep. That way I can work continuously, nonstop, without any interruptions. So, time can be a con. But, let me give you a pro tip on time management. Since we're talking about the kinds of time, and if you have a situation where you have a family or maybe you have a job or some other things that take up part of your time from working on your scrunchy business, um, time management will be a friend to you. So, um, when my schedule or my life was not as, as, as hectic as it is at the current moment, I would schedule different days for different things. So let's just make up a schedule and give myself one off day. So on Mondays, I would cut fabric. Tuesday, cut my scrunchy casings. On Tuesday, maybe I would elastic Ooh, this turned out nice. I had to piece several pieces of fabric together. This is one of our mini scrunchies. So on Tuesday, I would elastic the casing and possibly sew them closed on Tuesday. Or if I didn't sew them closed on Tuesday, I would sort them all out into their color sections and then sew them closed um, based off of their colors. I like to sew my casings in the thread colors of the color of the fabric that I'm using. Some scrunchie makers just use white and black all the way through their scrunchies on the outside. Um, they'll just sew, sew a white um, stitch, <coughs> excuse me, but I kind of like to hide my stitch by using coordinated colors that match the scrunchie fabric. Um, so on, on what day are we on? Wednesday, I would sew the casing. Then maybe on Thursday, I would take pictures um for the website and social media friday i'm editing those pictures on saturday i may upload those pictures and if i have time i will go shopping if needed i will shop for my scrunchy fabric and if i don't have to shop i will possibly post those pictures to the different social media platforms and another thing that i've learned is as far as for social media to kind of ease onto the pro side when it comes to scheduling for social media is to batch shoot or batch record videos that I want to use for my social media platforms. And by batch recording, I mean shoot multiple videos in one day, which is what I'm doing today. So you may see me in this outfit in a couple of other videos. That is because I am trying to get some content. Once you get the content done and schedule it to go, it's it's a lot of stress relieved because you don't have to worry about, oh no, what am I going to release next week because it's already there. I literally have footage, um, probably at least five different videos that I have shot. I've never edited them, but I have them just in case I want to use them. I actually did a video last summer of me doing a tie-dye towel scrunchie that I never launched. I never did a video. I never uploaded the video. I have quite a few videos now that I think of it when I was in my little I don't want to do anything funk. I could have edited them, edited them and 
giving them to you all to watch but hey it is what it is um so yeah trying to think so if you can give yourself a schedule of different things to do each day each day if at all possible that is a great thing to do um also a pro and a con this is a pro and a con having a lunch date or having a lunch not lunch but lunch l-a-u-n-c-h so when i first started my scrunchie business i would have lunch dates i don't know if i mentioned this but if i did i'm going to go into further details now so i would lunch four times a year sometimes more in between but i would try to make sure it was four times a year summer spring no winter spring summer fall i would try to do that um so the pros of having a lunch is you have customers that anticipate something they're excited you can build up the excitement oh coming in three days coming in two days coming tomorrow people like the anticipation of knowing something's coming they don't necessarily like to wait but building the intensity of waiting for something that is there and can be sold out like that is an attraction to consumers um consumer behavior 101 learn that in master's class for marketing but who oh but that's not important but um people like to rush to get things i guess that's the word i don't know i'll think of the word later but yeah that's a pro you build up the excitement of something happening a con for me for doing a lunch would be having to do a lunch <laughs> I know this sounds weird since I'm doing everything by myself things take time to do so trying to create a lunch schedule it and have all that done is very time consuming what I am doing this summer is releasing certain items um, throughout the summer but I'm not going to have oh lunch well I take that back I may have it um, the only reason I'm saying I may because I'm not launching any scrunchy scrunchy themed lunches this season but i do have some apparel lunches that i am doing or apparel that i'm going to lunch i'm not sure i'm going to have a lunch countdown for it but we'll just have to see working on it right now um so that's a con and a pro i know i'm probably missing quite a few extra pros and cons that i could add to this video but i do want to keep it sweet and short and simple and to the point but if you have any questions any pros cons whatever you want me to add or any suggestions i am open to them so leave a comment down in the comment sa section down below don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications until then i will see you in the next video possibly wearing the same outfit my friend but thanks for watching and see you next time don't forget to subscribe by the way new things are coming sorry for the delay in videos too but have a great day see you next time bye, -bye.